Hi, I'm Suzanne Hubbard and this is Talk Time and today we're here with Alicia Asselbrook to talk about her gifts and the things that she does to help people. Alicia, yes ma'am, tell me a little bit about what you do. Okay, um, I started getting into my gifts a couple of years ago. I was in a couple of um, psychic groups online and so I just started seeing posts and I just started practicing. And the more I practiced, the more I got right with everything that I was doing. So this group, anytime anybody wanted a reading, they were having to pay for it. And I thought, this isn't right. People should be able to get readings for free, you know, because a lot of people are desperate. So I made my own group, which I got 80,000 members now, and it's a free group. And I've just, it's been going ever since. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure with you having the ability to help so many people, that you've received a lot of blessings in your life coming your way because of what you have done for people. Oh, absolutely. You know, the thing about it is, you know, when you discover your gifts like this, you know, you lose friends because, you know, some just don't believe, but you lose friends and, and I lost friends, but then again, I turned around and gained twice as many more that are up to my vibrational level mm -hmm. so, and, and we're just so connected, so. Well, can you tell us, the audience, about some of the gifts that you have? I am a psychic, which I am very intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, I am a medium where I talk and can um, communicate with deceased spirits. Um, I am also a Reiki master um, healer and a shamanic healer. So, out of the, the gifts that you have, what do you think are your strongest gifts? My strongest gift is my healing. Your healing, because yes. you said that, you know, in the conversation that we had previously, that you have always had this innate ability to heal. Yes. And that's what led you into your profession of nursing. Exactly. When um, uh, my son was smaller, um, he would have a fever and I could pull it out of him. Wow. And that was one of the turning moments that I realized, what am I doing? And I didn't even really realize it. So it's just been there and I've never really put full potential to it. Mm -hmm. So what was the catalyst in your life to make you want to get more in touch with the gifts that you have? Um, I was on Facebook one day and a couple of years ago and a friend that I went to school with posted his sister that had been missing for two years and that she has never been found. And when I seen her picture, I just, I seen exactly what happened to her, where she was, everything. It was, it was very overwhelming. Right. Did they find her? They have not found her yet. Mm -hmm. um, I would, I, I know the area around her, what it looks like, and I would love to go look for her. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the things that you see, you know, in regards to those have, that have passed on, and especially violent ways, how do you deal with those kind of visions or thoughts or, or images that you have? So crazy you ask that because the ones that I am drawn to mm -hmm. are the murders, the suicides, the really the bad deaths. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that always pull me in. Um, it, takes a, it takes a while to get used to, used to that because, you know, when you see something in your mind's eye and it's just horrific, it, you know, it bothers you, it really does. And you just have to learn to separate the mm -hmm. two. Right, and so when you see these things, do you think that it's because maybe it is potentially, you know, a lot more energy involved, you know, with suicides and homicides that, you know, that psychic burst, I suppose, right. at the death, do you think that that's what makes it a lot, I wouldn't say, but easier to see, maybe? Mm. So 
Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. It, it depends on the spirit because some spirits really want you to see what happened. Mm -hmm. And then I've had some that really protect and hide it. Sometimes they just come out and straight and give you information. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they hide it because they're protecting somebody in the woodland side. Mm -hmm. I've had that happen. Right. And potentially maybe embarrassed or um, wanting to shield themselves from the horror of it, maybe? I, I definitely have had suicides that way mm -hmm. that are really timid mm -hmm. because they're just... Um, some don't realize that they're, they've even passed on. Right. So it, there's a lot of anxiousness and, and things like that to go with it. Right. So what do you think happens to us, you know, when we die? Do you think our consciousness lingers or it goes onward? What do you think happens to us? I'll tell you this. My dad passed in November mm -hmm. and um, he had been having some problems. And my daughter called me, I just got off work, and my daughter called me and said, you know, they're doing CPR on my dad. And so I just started screaming and hollering, and I was on my way there. And just out of the blue, my daddy came to me, and he says, it's okay, babe. And I knew right then mm -hmm. he had passed. And so they do come like that. I, I see him a lot. He's with me all the time. Mm -hmm. So... What accounts for us being able to see some of our people and then they're just, some of them are just gone? And where do they go? Like the way the, and I really, it's really made me understand a lot more since my dad has passed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of psychics that you talk to, usually they have somebody that is really close to them that, that passed that really brought their gifts on. And when he passed, mine got a lot stronger. Like some spirits really want to help people in the living world, and they have that ability to do that. And some, I mean, like just say my grandmother, she's just happy doing what she's doing. But it seems like, you know, some energies, you know, that pass, that they just they're just disappeared they're gone you don't feel them anymore now a lot of times I, and i have crossed mm -hmm. um, people over before and a lot of times when you do cross them over you don't hear from them as as much and a lot of people will say don't cross my loved one over because they know that they just won't hear from them as much mm -hmm. unless they have a, just a very strong energy right so so you believe that when people pass that they're just still around? Their spirit is here, definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, the way I have learned with my dad, mm -hmm. when he passed, there was a, a, a realm that he went to where he learned all his life lessons. It's something we have to do after we pass. And to learn all your life lessons, you know, some people may agree with me, some people may not. I believe you get to choose if you want to reincarnate, mm -hmm. um, or you can be a guardian or guide. Mm -hmm. And like my dad chose to be my guardian. Mm -hmm. That's nice. So when people pass, they, they're given a choice. Is that just for everybody or is it for more positive energies and what do you think happens to those that are malevolent <laughs> energies and bad people you know honestly they are still like that in spirit they mm -hmm. are still nasty right i would think you know we're pretty consistent in that absolutely yeah so are they given choices honestly i feel they are mm -hmm. I really, I really believe they have a chance and a choice. So do you think those that choose to become guardians, that they come back as guardians of people just as nasty as they were, or do they harm people, or what? Those kind of people with that kind of energy, I, I, When they go through these life lessons, if they can learn their life lessons, mm -hmm. then I believe they can pass over right and have that choice. Mm -hmm. 
But you know, I mean, from what I see in human beings that are living, their patterns of behavior is like attracts like. That Absolutely. Was, so I wonder, and you know, I'm hypothesizing as well, if these these people that are malevolent and bad and evil, you know, if they were given a choice, I mean, some entities are just bad. Right, and if I ever come across something like that, I wouldn't even go there. I right. just would leave it alone. Right, I mean. Because it could, you know, a lot, it could affect me. Right, so have you come in contact with these malevolent entities? Yes, I have come mm -hmm. across doing house cleansings. Mm -hmm. Now explain about house cleansings. How does that work? Um, usually somebody messages me, calls me, whatever, lets me know what kind of things are going on in their house. They send me pictures of, you know, whatever's going on, pictures of where it's going on at. Um, usually I can see through pictures of what it is and can see them as well. So when you go to do a house cleansing, you know, that entails getting rid of these these entities or energies that are right. in these people's houses and cleansing the space of all of that, correct? That's correct. And from what I understand about these entities that inhabit houses, that sometimes they physically, emotionally, and even people's health has deteriorated because of these presence in their Absolutely. homes. Absolutely. I've got a house in that condition right now. Mm -hmm. So what are the common things that, you know, because a lot of times people are so busy these days, they wouldn't even recognize it if it was right in front of their face. What are some of the more typical things that, that would, should alert someone that they need to be more aware and present in their... Well, a lot of times they start hearing things, they mm -hmm. will even see it. They get very depressed, very, you know, anxious, even get suicidal. Mm -hmm, because so it affects them and it affects their health tremendously. Right. And from what I understand, some people have even displayed physical symptoms, like scratches and absolutely. bites yes, and whatever. Absolutely. From these energies that are inhabiting their home. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That can happen. Tell people about what you do in order to clean a house. How do you, what do you do? Usually I'll go in and just fill the house out before mm -hmm. I even do a cleansing. I'll go and just fill the house out after I've seen the pictures and, mm -hmm. and heard what's going on. And then I'll usually go back, um, I take sage, I pray. I have a ritual that I do before I do any house cleansing on my own. And um, we, Usually, I'll sage out their house, and we will put salt in their house as well to keep, keep them from coming back in. Right. And do you believe that some houses, like new constructions, get infected by events that have happened on the property? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I've had things in my house. I know, you know, like Weed Alley is a very haunted town. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of spirits here, mm -hmm. and it's just from all the Indians, and, and you know, and they were very spiritual. Mm -hmm. And when anything you disturb like that is gonna wake something up, right? And so, you, around here in our local vicinity, that's a very common occurrence. I've got three or four houses here, and we and we to mm -hmm. do. Oh wow! Yeah, that's that's interesting. Very, and. What has been the most, I mean, wow thing that you have encountered in doing this stuff? I was doing a reading and somebody had passed. Mm -hmm. Well, this girl that had posted for this reading on this person that was deceased, there was a lot to more to the story than she told mm -hmm. and I knew it. And um, it was all about, you know, they were into Satanism and all kind of things like this. And so um, when I went to bed last, that night, and I mean, I've had demons just come, come to my face. It was horrifying the first time. I'm sure. Very. 
fairy. <laughs> when you have these demonic visits, I suppose, I mean, how do you deal with that? Well, the first thing that I have learned after the first time was mm -hmm. never to show any fear right. at all. Right. Because it feeds on it. Right. And it makes it stronger. It makes it stronger, exactly. Right. So what things do you, have you put in, in place to protect yourself from these evil forces? Well, the first thing I do is I am a Christian and I mm -hmm. always ask God to protect me mm -hmm. and I shield my whole energy. I have had them come up and bounce off of me because they can't get into my energy. What advice would you give to someone who is feeling that they are drained constantly and their energy is being constantly depleted? What are some of the things that you think that advice that you could give them to restore their own energy, make themselves stronger. A lot of times when people get drained like that, they're usually empaths and what they're doing, they're absorbing the other people's negative energy and taking it on as their own, like I did. And um, there's crystals that will definitely help with, the you know, keep a negative energy away and ways, techniques to ground yourself to, to, the, to Mother Earth and shield yourself from things like that. Mm -hmm. And if someone wants to to get in touch with you for a house cleaning or some advice or a reading, how do they get in touch with you? They can message me on Messenger through Facebook, mm -hmm. or they could go to my page, Healing with Alicia, and get in touch with me through there. That's great. Alicia, in closing, is there anything more that you can think of that you want to share with anyone before we leave? I would just like to say that people don't realize um, what effect the spiritual world sometimes has on the physical world. And um, if you have anything going on, you know, join my group, which is Free Psychic Readings and Spiritual Connections. It's on Facebook. And educate yourself about this. Go in and just read things other people do, and you'd be really surprised. Hey, I got that going on in my house mm -hmm. as well, and I didn't understand what this is. If, if anyone is having any problems at home and they are suspecting that it's a spirit, give me a call, let me come look at your house, see what's going on and we can figure it out. That's great that you offer that to people because I, I do think that so many people aren't aware that their lives are being affected in, by the spirits around them. And a lot of people are in denial. Right. Right. Because and just non-believer until just something really mm -hmm. keeps happening until they just can't keep explaining it. Right. So everyone, if you have any questions or any problems and you need some help, please contact Alicia. She's on Facebook and she has these gifts that can help people. And I just want to encourage people to educate yourself and be aware of what is going on around you. And Alicia, thank you for coming in and talking with me today. Thank you for having me. It's, I've really enjoyed our time together. I have too. And thanks. Until next time, this is Suzanne and this is Talk Time. Take care and have a great day. Thank you.